I really welcome this uh, initiative and I'm sure that uh, Peter Poiman and other speakers will uh, cover uh, the main topics that you need to talk about today. Uh, I would like to say on behalf of the, the EU delegation that uh, we are very much uh, supportive of the civilian sector reform. We are supportive of uh, your initiative and we are also aware that uh, Armenia indeed faced a very challenging year in 2020 and continues to face uh, challenges. Uh, it is very unusual that uh, uh, one country would have to face pandemic, war, and then political crisis in the same time. So it's uh, indeed very demanding. And uh, we in the EU delegation uh, uh, want to continue to support uh, the reforms that uh, have been taking place uh, in Armenia uh, since uh, two or three years ago. Um, looking forward, uh, we are very happy that, that uh, the SEPA, the Comprehensive Enhanced Partnership Agreement between <clears throat> the EU and Armenia um, uh, has finally been ratified uh, by all the member states of the European Union and will enter into force on 1st of March, um, so uh, basically in three weeks. And that uh, will enable us uh, to deepen the, the cooperation uh, even more. Um, as, as you might know, uh, we have been supporting reforms in the area of uh, justice, police reform, human rights, uh, fight against corruption, uh, as well as public administration reform and uh, public financial management. So uh, for us, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the support for the reforms in Armenia remains to be a crucial part of our activity. And uh, uh, we... Uh, Actually, right now we are in the face uh, of uh, so-called multi-annual uh, indicative uh, planning or programming. Uh, we are consulting uh, uh, all the main uh, governmental bodies. And uh, um, um, as I said, and I, I underline and I reiterate that really the uh, support for the reform uh, remains to be uh, the crucial one. Back in 2020, uh, we um, have supported also four new twinning projects uh, dealing, apart from others, with civil service and uh, civil protection. And uh, uh, therefore, we remain committed also through uh, the cooperation with the member states uh, to, uh, to the reforms. Um, in 2020, um, the police reform advance in Armenia overall uh, and it kept the momentum in spite of the challenges uh, related to pandemics and related to, uh, to a Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Uh, we have met uh, just very recently with the Minister of Justice um, and, and a couple of uh, other uh, uh, governmental bodies. Uh, so uh, we can confirm that we will uh, continue also uh, with the support of the, of the police reform. Um, I would like to uh, say on my behalf that um, uh, I have joined uh, the EU delegation uh, a little bit more than two months ago, but I did uh, work before here for two and a half years uh, for the Czech Embassy as the deputy head of the Czech Embassy. So I'm really uh, glad that um, uh, uh, such an expert uh, of the Czech origin uh, like Petr Poiman, uh, join, join the, the, the forces uh, with you and that he may uh, uh, present, do the presentation. Uh, by, by the way, uh, how long I can talk? An hour or half? And... Uh, well, an hour would be fine if you would like to. It is also fine for us. Uh, out of a half hour and uh, you know what just say me what uh... well uh, half an hour 40 minutes uh... Uh, okay uh, 40 minutes okay it's okay um, uh, so uh, my experience with the police reform is based first of all on two main uh, experiences one experience is of course of course as you said the Czech police uh, Czech police forces, Czech reform or Czechoslovakian reform as because as a reform of Czechoslovakian police started already before the, um, when, when the, there was still Czechoslovakia in the beginning of 90s. 
uh, and uh, Czech police reform, as you may, uh, if uh, you had the opportunity to see some of the materials I have, uh, I have sent it to you, uh, you see there are always the talks about the reform. Uh, there is a lot of uh, um, papers about the reform, but uh, in the practical life, it's not so it's not so good as it's described on the papers you may have the opportunity to read on my webpage. So, and the second experience by, is uh, from Ukraine because I, I was working there on, on the field on practical level with uh, Czech criminal police. We were sharing uh, and with Czech NGOs, that's, it's very part of uh, police reform or this civic um, uh, and the NGO part of a new approach to the security. As we were working there with uh, La Strada, with uh, Open Society, we were doing uh, uh, maps of criminality. I'm going to talk about a little bit. We were, to, we, were, we were sharing the experience as for the human trafficking and as for the violence against children and domestic violence. And of course, organized crime, corruption and the topics which I, the topics I am first of all focused on. I, I, I made uh, I am, it's, it's the main topic of my, of my, of my research. So the question actually in 90s, uh, when, when uh, after the Velvet Revolution, the question was how to move, uh, how to change the police from the instrument of communist party, uh, the instrument uh, which was purely repressive to something which is a part of society and which, was, which should serve to society and uh, uh, how to do it uh, with the police forces, that the police forces will be able to work independently, impartially, objectively, and they would not, and they would be able to uh, investigate the corruption in a high, as for the high ranking officials, even in government. Uh, so we had some experience with this already, I would say in some cases positive as uh, our police was investigating former very high ranking officials, including, including, including uh, Minister of uh, Health, who was in the time when he was arrested with the, with the, uh, with the man, uh, with the, uh, because of uh, corruption, he was a, he was a governor of central, uh, central, uh, central Czechia. Uh, and uh, there was an investigation even uh, of very close circle around uh, around prime minister. Actually, uh, his mistress was investigated. Uh, and now I uh, now I believe they are married. Uh, and uh, they th 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 there was also a links of corruption. And here I am also very close to to, to Armenia. As you may see, if there is a man. This is a lawyer in the red jacket uh, just have a look and i moved on another slide and uh, the, the 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 lawyer who was uh, uh, defending uh, mr of mistress of our prime minister his name is eduard bruna he is a quite famous lawyer in prague working for high ranking officials and for high ranking old school criminal <laughs> members and it, he was also a lawyer of andranik sogoyan who may know as you, uh, Andrei Niksagan is a person, person you, you may know because he, he is originally from Armenia in the Czech media and in Russian media. He is described as a Vorb Zakonie. In English, it's thief, thief, thief in law, but you know, I don't like this translation, so I prefer to use a Russian, uh, a Russian translation. Uh, Vorb Zakonie, Zaplen Karansky, who was in charge um, of uh, some criminal groups from former Soviet Union in Prague. And he was accused uh, of um, several um, uh, killings in Prague. Uh, some of the member of the group were arrested and and uh, and now they are and punished. Now they are in prison. Uh, Sogan was also punished, but he was able to disappear before uh, in, in time. So now he should be in Armenia. So send our our greetings to him. We are waiting for him. Uh, so, I think I will go back to the topic. If you would, uh, if you are interested in, uh, you may uh, you may ask me uh, about this issue because it's quite close to some aspect aspects of uh, police reform. I am going to talk about. 
As for the Czech Republic, this is very basic uh, organization schema of uh, um, with some historical background of our parties. Uh, the most important thing, and I, you will see it especially in comparison with uh, Ukraine. In fact, uh, in, in my country, all police forces, all police forces involve uh, uh, or our, our structures in uh, um, um, how to say this, how to explain it that you would understand, you know, uh, the, the, um, all police forces in my country are under Czech police, you know, we don't have nothing like, for example, in the US, you have a, a local police, they are investigating uh, the cases, but you have also the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And it's there are two separate or, or several separated organizations. That uh, I, I not now I'm not talking about intelligence services. I'm talking only about about uh, law and form, law enforcement agencies. That all law enforcement agencies with the police uh, authority uh, are under Czech police. So you cannot find some other structure except one which is general inspection of police forces, but they are investigating only the cases which are connected or committed by police officers. So you cannot find some other structure who would in, which would be uh, allowed to investigate. We have some intelligence services, but they are not the law enforcement, law enforcement agencies. They are only gathering information for gathering information for the government. So the, 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 the our investigations is taking uh, is take is is going under uh, is, is done by police uh, by police by Czech police, and then I can do some division also. There is an external service. External service in our case it's a uniform police. Uh, it means you know here you have this uh, traffic police. Uh, there is also a directorate for weapons and security materials because you know uh, they are in charge of uh, people who are. Uh, registered as owners of weapons, and there is a lot of other uh, functions they, they, they have. So it's quite huge, and the big uh, there is a big number of workers uh, and officers working in this external service. And there's a, there is a criminal police and investigation service uh, as uh, part of not uniform police. Sometimes actually they wear uniform, but usually they are without uniform. Uh, these these um, structures are main. Uh, they, they, they are in charge of investigation of serious cases. They have local offices around the Czech Republic, and there is a. For now, in this moment, there are several um, structures uh, which should be, in a short way, described as a Bureau of Criminal Police and Investigation. And investigation so which is a which is a part of police presidium. Uh, the colleagues I'm working with uh, on a reform, for, for example, in Ukraine, are from this part, uh, as they are in charge of methodology. Uh, they, 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 it's office in Prague on the police presidium, so they are controlling, they are teaching, they are training the rest of criminal police. And the criminal police of investigation service is. Um, Working around the Czech Republic, they have offices in in uh, almost everywhere in our, our bigger uh, in our bigger towns regions, uh, and they are in charge of investigation of all possible crimes. After that, they have there are some like what let's say special departments, but these departments are also part of this criminal police. They are just more focusing and they are more specialized for some kind of crime. So now is a national headquarter of an, uh, against organized crime um, or national center for combating organized crime. It's quite new structure uh, uh, based on, um, but they are like experienced policemen from uh, the, another department. I will uh, talk about it, this uh, uh, just in, in a minute. And there is a national drug headquarter uh, which is a uh, department, it's not, uh, which is uh, focusing only for drug dealers combating drugs. So this is, um, th there are some division of labor, let's say. So if you see on the, from your, on the left side, there is a 
this division like it was um, some years ago, I believe 2000 to, to, till 2013, but it's not so important. So there was a criminal police on, of investigation on the top. Uh, there was a national drug headquarter or national center of combating uh, drug uh, trafficking. It's, it's still independent. And after that, there was a um, department of combating organized crime and anti-corruption police. So there was a three bodies of these specialized forces. But uh, as you saw on the previous slide, um, I was talking about the investigation in Czech government, about the investigation of mistress of, of our, our former prime minister. Uh, all of this was, a, of course, a big scandal as there was a police uh, in, the head, in, in the house of government, there, there was a, uh, there was a search in the houses uh, of our of the mistress of our prime minister. Uh, she, she was. It looks that she was actually middle person between the prime minister and some of our oligarchs. Uh, and it looks the prime minister was more the victim of victim of love. We can say victim of of the mistress. Uh, she was manipulating with him. Uh, it's also based on the tapes, uh, which was publicized in Czech media. So we saw quite big scandal uh, and the uh, and this this uh, um, department of combating organized crime was in charge of because they were arresting the people in charge involved. Uh, they were investigating the cases and things like that. So there was a, some kind of political will to remove this department or First of all, to remove the persons who were involved in so sensitive political issue out of police. So the decision was taken uh, to do a re reorganization, which was not, which was, you know, I, I'm not criticizing the reorganization as itself. It maybe it would be even good idea because sometimes it's good if, uh, you know, if you are investigating organized crime, of course you are investigation investigating also corruption. You cannot divide organized crime from corruption. But in this case, the motivation was poorly political. So uh, uh, these two departments of um, police were uh, again uh, integrated. And now there is a national headquarter against organized crime and, or national center, we call it, of, of combating organized crime, which is in fact uh, Department of Combating Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Police in one, in one, in one department. And there is still independent uh, drug headquarters. So now we can talk and I would be happy to answer your questions because I actually, this is a topics we are still talking about. We are always a question, especially from Ukrainian colleagues, how is the best to organize the police forces? You know, as for this case, if, if there are no questions, because actually this is a quite important issue. Are, are there some questions? It is, do, we may continue with questions at the end, probably. So. Yeah, you, you do not hesitate to ask the question, because I know this is quite uh, interesting uh, issues for, 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 for everyone, because we are always asking, you know, uh, if you, how to uh, work, how to organize the, all of this. In fact, there are pluses and minuses. It's, it, you cannot say this is the best way how to organize criminal police. It's not possible because in different countries, it's different. You know, in, my, in your country, it may be different from our country. It's based on experience, historical experience, some institutional memory. In fact, as I know, for example, if we are talking about, because if you are working with a corruption, a big high ranking political corruption, of course, you are under very strong political pressure. It's just impossible to be, uh, um, not, not, not to feel this influence from high ranking politicians, from local politicians, because you, if you are working, uh, if you are investigating the organized crime in war, for, for example, in, uh, in founts of the European Union uh, or uh, with some other, uh, support uh, with the, the, the dividing the local or central bu budget, you will always be in some touch or you will uh, be a problem for, for uh, a local or central uh, governments because you are working 
uh, on the field, which is very sensitive for them. And unfortunately, even in my country, uh, in the center of Europe, and the member of European Union, uh, we have a lot of politicians involved in corruption, unfortunately. So there, if, if you have a department involved in combating corruption, you need to, you, you should expect this political pressure. And it makes the work difficult. Yeah, it, it makes work difficult, as we saw on the example of it, this uh, case of, um, of uh, former prime minister, Nechas. As for if, if you are working on the field with narcotics, usually this is probably police work like in old movies. You know, there are bad guys, there are good guys, they are making narcotics, you are arresting them, there are some investigation. Of course, there are some corruption, but it's on a low level. If you are not working on big uh, cargo uh, or trafficking narcotics from Afghanistan, but you are working on local level, you are almost out of this political pressure and based on the talks with the policemen in this case it makes sense to be a, it may it may have a sense to to have this department separately as uh, they don't have they don't feel this political pressures as they are working really on the field against the nar narcotics and the, 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 the for them the police life is my, more white than black so hard to say what is what is better. The problem is that especially in high ranking organized crime structures, all of this is interconnected. So you cannot divide organized crime uh, connected with corruption uh, uh, and uh, uh, human trafficking, uh, drug, drugs as a one group may be involved and often is involved in a lot of criminal activities, including human trafficking, drugs, etc., etc. So I would say uh, this is the topic of this should be a topic of long discussions uh, with the local experts, with international experts, and um, it should be based on some local experience uh, because or and it's the way we may move uh, in, in my country in, in the future, that there will be actually several specialized departments involved in combating organized crime, combating drugs, combating uh, corruption, but there will be some kind of um, central analytical body who would uh, share all important um, uh, informations from all, from all aspects, aspects. And if there will be organization, criminal organization, involved in uh, several uh, criminal uh, criminal activities uh, they would monitor monitor them in this broader context as it may have a um, very good uh, a very good uh, uh, very good um, con conclusions as you may know uh, usually uh, high ranking mafia bosses were not arrested for murder or for some violence but for some other crimes, like uh, Al Capone was arrested because he didn't pay some taxes, or he was uh, making fraud as for the taxes. Uh, they didn't pay the taxes for the US government. So it's always, you need to work on the group, not on particular crime in some cases, yeah? So all of this should be a part of the discussions between the criminologists, policemen, experienced NGO uh, working on the field of of security. Uh, now we are waiting for a possible new reform of criminal police. Uh, and uh, I cannot, as I said, I cannot say uh, that there is only one good way, but the problem in my country that there is still, it's much better than it was like 10 years ago. Yeah, because we saw, saw the police, it's more, uh, more, uh, more independent. But anyway, all of these reform are, uh, are usually motivated by some political uh, uh, reasons. There is no, uh, there is no long discussion how it should be done. You know, uh, uh, like it would be in Germany, for example, if you want to change something in the police forces. You know, there is a long discussion uh, minus what would be pluses, what will be, with what, what will be negative, what will be positive, and after that decision is taken. In my country, sometimes it takes like several months until there is a change 
of the of the organization stru structure and after that we see that actually there are some uh, there are some serious serious problems as uh, police should investigate all cases um, and, and priority priorities should be uh, like focus not only on drugs or corruption but police should investigate those are our criminal cases uh, which are which are identified uh, so this is for the Czech police um, shortly I will go back later but if you have a question directly to this uh, to this slide please ask if there are no questions no can you hear me yes uh, yes please continue yeah okay uh, just really do not uh, because you know if, if there is some some so Ukraine Ukraine is much more <laughs> difficult and of course I am not able to explain uh, the system of uh, Ukrainian police in general or Ukrainian law enforcement agencies in general I um, first of all it's not possible because it's in a little bit chaos uh, the second, I don't know everything, and it would take hours to do it. But the main difference I see that there is a police of Ukraine, as in my country. But there are other bodies, which other police bodies with the different names, who are also law enforcement agencies. Uh, and the reason is clear: uh, the, the Ukraine, uh, when uh, some reform started uh, was and is under the influence of uh, of different countries but in this case it's positive influence of the western countries who are trying to um, build some new who are trying to help with the building of new 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 police structure and who are trying to help ukraine to get rid of corruption so the corruption actually and the the high, the corruption of especially of high ranking officials is the big motivation uh, to create uh, new independent bodies. So uh, not only national police of Ukraine is involved in this in this in this uh, uh, fight against corruption. I think the most important and uh, very and uh, and 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 very pro western or by us uh, supported by the the us uh, advisors and and, and uh, finance money is the anti uh, is national anti corruption bureau of ukraine uh, this looks to be one of the most maybe successful or looks that they are trying to do their best uh, th th they are built on us experience with the us support uh, and they looks to be as a quite, I, I, if, if I'm comparing this, uh, their work, and if I'm talking with the Czech uh, police officers who are working, uh, who are also working with them, they looks to be more the most, uh, the mo as a, as a, uh, the most in, in independent and trustful uh, police structure in, in Ukraine. Based on talks with my colleagues from police, from these special forces, they said that we are working in fact only with them because we cannot trust to anyone else. So National Art of Corruption Bureau is something which may be given as an example of how it may look like probably based on my experience. If there are some other ideas, criticism, I am happy to, uh, to, 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 to hear this. There is also a State Bureau of Investigation uh, which uh, uh, looks to be under quite strong influence of former structures, even uh, uh, from the, the Yanukovych rule. Uh, so this is probably not the best example. Uh, the State Bureau of, of Investigation is in charge of, uh, of uh, also corruption, uh, but they have different focus. Yeah, uh, there is also special anti-corruption prosecutor office but they are part of general prosecutor office uh, so this is um, not a separate organ they are part of uh, general prosecutor office in general and there is a national police uh, of ukraine uh, they are involved in combating organized crime on local level and central level uh, 
uh, and there is a several actually several in all regions there is a patrol police as you said there was a patrol police report in armenia so there was and i would say this is the only successful more or less reform in ukraine as there was a new patrol police around the around the ukraine uh, on the beginning of the reform there was a big motivation there were new people joining the patrol police uh, there was uh, there were people with a very very educated there were, there were our groups of people you know very educated people from the bank went to work to patrol police because they wanted to be a, they always wanted to be policemen uh, but they but there was no possibilities earlier because our police was corrupt so no chance to work normally and their dream was to work normally i know several cases of even quite rich people who were working in the banks for example they joining the patrol police but there were also normal people with uh, almost no uh, uh, like with some basic education but uh, wanting to work and they were trying to do the best there were some trainings it's quite short but i think there was a positive direction that if we if we would work and if ukraine would work in this direction as on the beginning till now uh, after six years uh, actually five years because uh, police reform started a little bit later and not just uh, not, uh, not just after the revolution, but they would have for the patrol police this time would be totally enough with quite good, trained, responsible police with uh, which would have some perspective, sustainable perspective, I would say. But it doesn't happen, unfortunately. More and more we see that even the new, new patrol police, uh, there was a corruption, and the, the, there were uh, guys who just bought the uh, how to say this? There was a special testing for old policemen. There was a commission. There was testing how the old policemen may rejoin the new police. And even on this field, uh, unfortunately, we got some info that there were uh, also um, corruption, influence of uh, of uh, American advisors uh, decreased, which was in this case not very good. Um, and uh, motivation of people uh, and personnel uh, was, was decreasing. They saw again corruption. Uh, and the problem is that the patrol police was the, <coughs> <coughs> the patrol police was the only part of a Ukrainian police, which was where the reform was more deep. Uh, I will give you a, uh, some examples, you know, uh, so there is a big problem with the timber wood in Ukraine, around the Ukraine. Uh, there, are, uh, there are criminal groups who are, uh, who are, um, who are exporting illegally timber, timber wood to European Union. Uh, uh, and Ukraine looks to that there are a lot of forests, forests, but in fact it's not true. There are not a lot of forests. There are more fields and mountains. But anyway, in in Kharkov region, in Zakarpattia, um, uh, there are big forests, and this timber wood, which is illegal, because you cannot. Uh, there is a there is a law in Ukraine that the timber wood cannot be exported. You may you can make something for that. And that's you can export, but you cannot uh, uh, you cannot uh, export the material as it would it, it it has very negative ecological ecological consequences. So police uh, patrol police is checking this uh, this tracks full of timber woods with no papers or with fake papers, and uh, they are stopping them, checking them. And uh, writing the uh, writing the uh, protocol about the illegal activities uh, of uh, illegal transport uh, of timber wood. The, the result is uh, that the driver or the persons around you know, are in charge. That you know, okay, you can write it. They are they have a protocol, uh, but. Uh, investigation of the case later was given to the rest uh, or to the criminal police which was not uh, which was not reform and no investigation is taking place so the motivation of patrol policemen who saw this several times a day this 
is also decreasing. In a result, many of them uh, are now back in civilian life. They are not serving in patrol police anymore. Uh, they are not willing to play this game and to, to be a part of, uh, of, the, of the corruption. Uh, so this is, uh, I would say, uh, more or less a negative experience that uh, the, po po the police reform was not finished. And now I don't see uh, some positive perspective without radical change and in the Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs. As I see, there is no will to, to, to do something serious with, with, the, with, the, with the police. And there is, of course, security service of Ukraine. It's, first of all, intelligence service, but they are also investigating some cases of uh, terrorism or some high-ranking organized crime issue and something, some, uh, and even corruption, which should not be like this, because uh, according to the previous decision, corruption should be investigated by the other organs. But in some cases, security service of Ukraine is still in charge of some corruption cases. In general, as it's similar intelligence uh, service, I don't think this is a good decision. Uh, and based on, my, on, my on the talks of my friends from police, you know, it's always difficult, especially for international cooperation. If you know that your police partner is simultaneously working for intelligence service, it's difficult to, it looks like something is not fair here. So you are all a policeman or you are an intelligence officer. It, in, in, democratic, in democratic parties, it should not be in one organization. It was this Soviet approach, you know, that there was a KGB, uh, where it was in fact federal police and simultaneously there were the, the directorates of the intelligence. So uh, I, I, uh, based on my experience, based on talk of experts, uh, I, I know uh, it's always good to, 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 to do this separately and to have a different, so, um, like we have in my country. So we have intelligence services, but they are not law enforcement agencies. They are only gathering information and we have a police. And police is not in, in is not intelligence service. This should be uh, divided clearly. Uh, so uh, this should be changed, in my view, as for the uh, as for the Ukrainian as for the Ukrainian case. Some questions as for the Ukraine. Maybe it was too short. Maybe I can go deep to some questions. Uh, we may collect questions later. Okay. Okay. So. Um, uh, this I used from uh, uh, from Geneva Center for Security Sector Reform. We were using their publications uh, for our projects of uh, in, in Ukraine also. And uh, if you can see it, uh, uh, police reform in general is very broad, uh, and of course even in uh, this uh, seminar, we are going to talk only about quite small part of it. But on this diagram, I would like to underline some, some issue. So now uh, I was talking, first of all, about the police uh, reform and uh, supervision about the organization of all of this issue. So it's one important part, but definitely not only one part of, 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 uh, of, of reform. The second very important part of the reform is international community, you know, external support. Uh, and in this case, I can go back to the case of uh, Andranik Sogoyan. As I said, he is described as a war of Zakonye by Russian uh, and by Russian, Armenian, and some Czech, forces, Czech sources. And uh, when there was a uh, when there was a prosecution, uh, his lawyer said that actually he is not a, he is not a thief in law. That actually that is some misunderstanding. Uh, that it cannot be like that. Uh, but if there would be some closer international cooperation with Armenian experts, they would be able to deliver quite strong evidences that actually he is involved in criminal activities. Because uh, for me, and he was arrested here in, in Prague, it, it was a not a new person for me because he was quite often mentioned in uh, many Russian sources. I don't know Armenian. 
uh, language. So I was reading the Russian sources and I saw this name there for several times. He was described uh, there as uh, someone who is involved in criminal activities. There was a, um, there was a, there were informations about his activities in Russia. He was actually deported from Russia to Armenia. And after that, he moved to, to, to Czech Republic where based on the sources, open sources we have here, he was involved in uh, racketeering in, in the borderland between Czech, Czech and, and Austria. Uh, um, there was a vict his victims was first of all, uh, there's uh, citizens of Romania who were uh, working here on the business. So he was, uh, there was some, uh, there was some uh, racketeering. Uh, they, they, they were forcing him to pay some additional money for, 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 uh, for, 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 for uh, that they would be able to work in, in normal con conditions. The, uh, racketeering, let, let's say, like this. Um, uh, but uh, as uh, the cooperation was not, uh, there was probably no cooperation, cooperation with the Armenian or Russian authorities. Uh, the, uh, this explanation it was successful because there was no clear evidence that actually uh, Arndranik Sogoyan is a thief in law. Uh, there were several articles, you know, but you know, it, it's only for experts, the judge cannot use it. Uh, so, and without this, without this international cooperation, it was difficult. Uh, to make uh, some decision for a judge. And in fact, he was released and he disappeared to Armenia. Later, uh, another, another uh, in a new process, he received average, average 22 years uh, for, for, for contract killings. Uh, some of the members of the group are in jail, but uh, Sagan himself was able to disappear in time. And now I think he's in, he's in, he's in uh, Ar Armenia. So for, that's why the international co cooperation is very important. We have very close international cooperation with Ukraine. As I said, it's still difficult because you know we cannot believe to everyone. But in some cases, the international cooperation is uh, is um, working, and they, there are some results that there were there were there were arrests in my country. Uh, as I know, uh, there were uh, people who were. Uh, uh, taking out uh, cash from the bank bankomats by the illegal way it was a group of Ukrainian criminals. Uh, they were arrested just recently. And there are some other cases uh, even more serious. Uh, I may share with you when we will see, when we will see personally. Uh, in international cooperation and this trust between police in different countries, it's just key issue. Uh, so, um, by the way, remark, uh, I was uh, involved and you are also welcome to be involved as uh, Armenia is a part of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Eastern Partnership, I believe. Uh, you can, uh, if there are some police officers, you can join a CEPOL exchange program. Uh, it's an instrument how to exchange the experience between Czech police, uh, criminologists, criminalistics, so working people working on the field uh, with our partners abroad. Uh, I was uh, I was involved in the in the in the project uh, in 2017. I was in Odessa Police Academy, and friends from Odessa Police Academy were later here in my country on the police presidium. So uh, this is very uh, and uh, this is supported by the by the European Union. And the program is quite quite good. There's a lot of paperwork, but in, in, in general, it makes sense to join to, to join the program uh, if you are interested in. That. Um, and there is also a very important part of reformist civil society, civil society NGO. Uh, this is something I'm going to talk in deep later. But you cannot you cannot. Um, Built, you can uh, trust if uh, the police is not communicating with uh, with uh, uh, with civil society, with people. You know, actually, uh, we have this in Soviet Union. Uh, the police uh, was um, evaluated uh, based on the based on the uh, number of. Uh, uh, murder or crimes investigated, but it's actually not an issue. Maybe in your region 
or you, in your department or in your in, in your uh, in, on your oblast there are no killings no uh, no murders no violence that you have nothing to investigate because everything is okay and everything is okay maybe because you are very good in um, prevention so there is nothing to investigate you have a police on the ground they are everywhere they people saw them people are talking with them though so you are able to identify the threats in advance so you have no criminality at all maybe in some small region it would be possible for example in my village we have no criminality almost uh, because there is no way how to commit a crime there is no opportunity and uh, anyway if you would do it there is a policeman in the center and they see uh, and he see everything but it doesn't mean he is a bad policeman that he didn't investigate a five murder a week because there was no murder so the most important issue to be evaluated is actually us how people local people see the police forces do they feel safe or you they do don't or they feel that they cannot let children walk uh, to school they have to be always with them because there are some um, risk on the way so this is the actually the best of way how to evaluate police not the number of uh, investigated cases it's only for some special forces but in general you should ask people how do you feel in this region if you're if you are a policeman is are responsible for this part of region let's talk uh, with the people if they feel good here so this is very important uh, in this uh, civic society sphere of reform you should uh, uh, talk with people you should talk with locals you should talk with the academia uh, you should work with media and you should work with ngos this is something i'm going to talk about a little bit later now I have several slides about organized crime. It's my main topic. So I will, will give you some of my points. Uh, and based on this, we will move to a different, to another part of my presentation. So based on my research, uh, the modern organized crime uh, beyond, uh, goes beyond the criminal world. So you cannot divide the, the rest of the world from the criminal syndicates. And the criminal syndicates are today included in legalized companies or even governmental structures. It is, uh, uh, sorry, there is a mistake. It is not possible to point the uh, to to point to point point the line between crime and politics. So it's not possible. I don't know. There is a mistake. It's probably old presentation where I was sharing it. So I'm very sorry for it. So it's not possible to to do this line. And the system of uh, organized crime groups change, uh, is, is now different. It's changed to the system of criminal environment. This is not my idea. It's actually uh, based on the Czech, Chatham House, uh, Chatham House uh, research made for Europol that you cannot see um, that we don't have only criminal groups now. We have some kind of criminal environment. So the whole portfolio of, of criminal activities in this criminal an environment uh, is hardly described and the only small group of insiders is involved so the line between the if you if we see if we if, if we would use again the case of uh, andranik sogoyan you may know uh, it was a clear criminal group you know it was some kind of social status he behaved as a thief he is probably the thief uh, he has a car as Thief usually has a black Mercedes. He, he is around, he is surrounded by the persons who looks to be dangerous. On the other side, you have a prime minister, his mistress, and the oligarch behind. They look nice. They are very officially covered. Uh, they have an office in the center of Prague. They are very rich and they look more or less normal. Uh, and they don't have a clear criminal group, you know, they are not surrounded by the men with mashing with uh, machine guns. They are they, they are just influential. They have they, they are controlling big finance. So they are supporting political career of some politicians. And if this support is an instrument of future control for these politicians. And there is usually some middle person, middleman who is dealing between this uh, 
politicians who were supported by the oligarchs. Uh, and in case of Nechas, it was probably uh, uh, this lady, Nadiova. She was arrested in the case. And from that time, there are a lot of, uh, there, is, there is some prosecution, uh, it's difficult to follow. In general, this division between the criminal groups, clear criminal groups with clear um, figures uh, are different from criminal environment. And I think this uh, picture may illustrate, may, may illustrate this issue. Uh, to give an example, if uh, Sogoyan was reportedly involved in racketeering, so old kind of criminal structures, this uh, oligarch, Ritik, uh, was involved in Prague public transport. I'm not sure if it's still true, but for many years, and based on the investigation of uh, some uh, NGOs and the police also, uh, if you are traveling, if you were traveling by the tram, by the metro, and you were buying the ticket for the Prague, Prague uh, public transport, you were receiving part of this uh, uh, some, uh, part of this money, something about several dollars from, from, from every ticket, uh, to a company, Cockwell Assets, and uh, the Cockwell Assets were a company based on Virgin Islands in the, Car in the Caribbean. And according to the Anti-Corruption Foundation, the company is or was linked to Mr. Ivo Reti. So this is a new way how criminals are working. Uh, how criminals are working. So this is as for the new organized crime, police uh, organization of police work, uh, pluses and minuses as for the organization schema, and also about uh, modernization of organized crime. Uh, in the second part of my, uh, of my, yeah, I have some limited time, but uh, as for the, the, the next uh, slides, I would like to focus your interest to some underestimated topic topics. Uh, this is based on my experience from Ukraine. So maybe in your country, it may be different. And I'm very sorry because my knowledge about Armenia is not very big. So I would be more than happy to answer your questions. But but really, I, I unfortunately have never been there. So I have, uh, for me, it's difficult uh, uh, to give you some concrete example of what I see, uh, what I saw uh, in Armenia as a problematic. But I think the human trafficking was problem everywhere and almost everywhere is underestimated as a problem. Uh, so human trafficking um, uh, should be investigated, should be identified, uh, and it should be also one of the highest priority of, uh, of, uh, of uh, police as is one of the most high, uh, as, as, as this is one of the most difficult uh, and most serious, most serious organized crime. It's in fact, in many cases, it's almost slavery. I was working in an organization involved in uh, support of uh, of victims of human trafficking, especially women from 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 female from Eastern Europe, Ukrainians. Uh, there were uh, also women from Vietnam and even from this exotic part of the world. We were trying to to, to help them to to to. to to change their lives. Uh, we had a shelter. Uh, we were trying to find a new work and we were also communicating with the police if, if they were willing to, to, uh, to give uh, some information to investigate the, the cases. Uh, but it's not only about the woman. Uh, there is, a, there is a, the example actually as for the property prostitution as actually they are looking for uh, for girls who are able to, uh, who are who are willing to work for two thousand uh, dollars a month for months, uh, and uh, housing is included, and uh, that that will be very interesting, and it looks it will be very interesting work. Of course, it's uh, some uh, they they are looking for for girls who would be, uh, who who will be involved in probably prostitution. Uh, but it's not only about prostitution, it's all, uh, also about force work, illegal migration. This is one of the examples of illegal, illegal migration. It was somewhere in South America. 
And uh, these are the pictures from St. Petersburg in 2009, when I was uh, doing my PhD studies uh, in the center of work. Illegal services are openly offered. Passport, citizenship, everything on the center of town. Uh, in that time, maybe I was a little bit too much naive, but I made the picture and I asked my friends uh, and my professor, Jakob Ilyich Gilinski, you may read his books. It's very famous Russian and Soviet criminologist. Said how it's possible that the illegal services are so openly offered in the center of town. And he said, actually, you see, you see that there's a, there are the uh, citizenship, Russian citizenship offered. There are also um, some other uh, administrative offers uh, uh, in, uh, included. It's just clear like this. The structures who should combat this kind of crime and this illegal activities are in fact part of our problem. They are, you cannot work on investigation of human trafficking, combating organized crime, if organized crime is already controlled by the structure structures which should be, which should fight against them. And these pictures are just clear evidence that in that year in this town, everything, something like this was, something like this was happening. And it was not, not day I was meeting them regularly. So these, uh, these, uh, offer th these offers are probably still val val valuable. Uh, for us, uh, especially in uh, my country, and in this case, it was like I would say quite su successful. Partly also in Ukraine, it was successful. We see that uh, creation of trust between police and between a local citizen is actually key issue. You, you see the pictures, which it, it looks it's not related to some terrorism or organized crime investigation. In fact, exactly this is connected. I will explain you how. From the very beginning, you need to create a good approach with, uh, with, uh, and, and friendly and trustful relationship between police and local community, between police and children. A uh, friend of mine serving in Great Britain in police uh, is, is, uh, was, was very active in community policing. And he said, actually, the, the big number of informations about terrorism we receive from, not from children so small, but from younger students from basic schools, because uh, uh, from some communities, yeah, because they are talking, you know, at home they are talking, their parents are talking and people are talking. So even in the community policing, because there was this trust, uh, information about terrorism were gathered or a uh, human trafficking issue. It's the same, you know, if, the, if you cannot trust your local policeman, uh, you will not share with him the issue that it looks that your yeah, that uh, your neighbor is uh, is probably involved in some human trafficking issue, domestic violence, the same case. If something like this happened in the flex next to you, it's I know it's difficult, but uh, I have the same experience. We were living in a flat uh, uh, earlier, and I I heard I, I I we have heard very noisy uh, something uh, some very big noise. The children were crying, so I went down. I asked if, if everything is okay. They opened the door and everything was okay, but, on, but I can't take the sound. It looks that there is really some, something strange. If they would not open the door, I would call the police to solve the case because maybe domestic violence. Uh, so you should not be hesitated to call the police if you have some suspicious like this, because all of these crimes are very serious and domestic violence or bit, or, 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 uh, or, or, uh, or, uh, Abuse, uh, a children, uh, a violence against children, it, it, it's destroying the life of children forever. So this community policing is very broad approach. You know, here we are trying to build the uh, trust between small children. Uh, they, are, they are even not six and the local police, you know, there are the Ukrainian policemen, there are the Czech policemen. We are sharing them with, a, we have the car here. They can go inside, they can use everything what they, you know, 
and this will leave in the memory good um, th th this good memory will help us and will help will help them in future to say that actually the policeman is a positive hero you can trust him you can touch his car you can touch his uniform and it's not a part of the problem but if you have a problem you should ask him he is a part of the solution and this community policing approach and uh, uh, in some cases also in some, in some more more difficult cases uh, cooperation with ngos may uh, may be a good way how to start uh, with uh, basic uh, with building basic trust between citizens and police. Uh, there are some, you know, there is no definition of community policing. There are some, maybe some, some basic rules, uh, but someone else would give you a different uh, rules and they would be also correct. Uh, uh, the, the, the most important is a trust. So if you can trust to your local policeman, if uh, children, are approaching him, making a pictures with him, sharing with him uh, the problems they have. It is good to policeman. It is good to policeman. If a policeman is divided from the society and there is a division, and the people, uh, if the people see the car, police car, they are afraid. It's very bad police. It's very bad police. People cannot be afraid about police. People should uh, feel the respect, and they should see if if there is some problem. I think. Uh, Let's call the police. They will give us uh, uh, advice, or they will solve. They will. Uh, they will help us to solve the problem. So it's very mm, important to be close to closer to the citizens. Uh, police should be able to listen uh, what the problems are and how we may solve it. Solve it. Uh, so by this way, police cannot betray the trust of citizens. And very important issue. Sometimes there are the problems police is not able to solve. You know, they may they may, they some some reconstruction of the crossroad may be needed. So cooperation between police and local authorities is also very important. This is something um, I will show you one example how it may how it may work because not everything is in competence with police, but the local policemen should know everything about these problems and if there is a problem which is not in his competence or her competence he may contact the local authority and ask him to solve the problems there are some positive examples in my country i am going to talk about them a little later involve our groups of ethnic and age uh, you cannot build if there will be uh, like a uh, division between uh, police and society based on ethnical issue. Uh, it means that the, the, the ethnicity of the police will not correspond with the ethnicity of local citizens. It will not work as also. So uh, the best way is to include all possible groups, uh, especially, especially the groups who are working on the field, who are living on, 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 particular, uh, on particular territory, to police also. So uh, they should be a different uh, social age groups, and this will increase trust to to police. Uh, there are some pictures from the conference in Pilsen in Prague in the Czech Republic, uh, where the where the community policing was, was one of the most uh, important topic. A friend of mine and uh, one of our uh, colleague from British police now he's back I think in my country, Peter Torak was also participating and he was uh, he was sharing it his, his experience with british uh, community policing which is one of the best in in the world i would say uh, and uh, these uh, are some examples how a part of the conference there was a local police as a part of a state police we have also local police and actually community policing is very often work for local police so uh, local police were showing police cars to local children and so we were not doing only some scientific work on the conference but outside uh, there was a some program for children uh, and uh, this was actually the great example how to build the trust between society and uh, local and local police and this is actually if we will have a time later i will show you how this is working. You can try it even if it's online. 
And this is maps of criminality. It's a great example of cooperation between NGOs, people, local people, uh, state bodies, police. In my country, it's working for several years and I know the people who, uh, who, who build it, actually, I involved them into my projects in Ukraine. They were trying to share this experience with the Ukrainian police also to, and in some regions, uh, maps of criminality are working. Uh, in, a, in my country, it's working on the state level. So you can hear on the left, on the left side, you can switch or we can, you can switch on, you can switch off the case, uh, the, 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 way, the, the types of the crime you are interested in. So you can find on the map, where is the big majority of murder in my country? It's, it's probably Prague. It will be probably Prague and big cities, yeah? Rape, uh, robbery, uh, car theft. Uh, and as for the cart, if you may see almost the address where it is, so if you have, uh, if you are, if you are very afraid, uh, as for the, your car, you can find the places where the cart, uh, where you can have a problem with the cart, uh, or you are, you want to buy a house, uh, you can have a look. Uh, uh, what about the criminality on the place where you are going to buy something? This was quite problematic, by the way, to build this. Uh, to, to create this map online because the police was not very willing to share the experience and then and, and, and not experience to share the uh, information about the criminality but finally yeah now it's working and uh, on the end i can show you uh, on online how how it's how it's working and this is the last topic i have uh, it's one of the one of the my my main topic in in the last uh, years, it's uh, violence against children and domestic violence is the topic I'm working on uh, with the Czech uh, criminal police and investigation service. They have special methodology and they have special way how to identify the, the, the victims, how to interrogate them. Uh, they know how to include the other actors as a social prevention authority, school, psychologists, police, investigators, local NGOs, etc. And in general, we may say that in this case, based of our 15 experience of our police, we may say that in violence against children, we are really, uh, we are really uh, experienced. Uh, and in many cases, our experience was used also abroad. Uh, when I wanted to try, when I was, when I, when I wanted to open this topic in Ukraine, uh, I, uh, I was trying to find some partners, and it, and they said to me, actually, Peter, we don't have this problem with this domestic violence, especially with violence against children and child pornography. No, 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 we don't have these problems. But as I uh, was almost sure that uh, it's not uh, true, that they have a more problem with identification, as, uh, it's not possible that this kind of crime will not be there if it's everywhere. Uh, we made ourselves round tables and to this round table, we invited not only police, but also psychologists, uh, uh, teachers and other groups. And during even during this uh, round tables, we, I, uh, the conclusion was, yes, you have a problem. You have just a problem with identification and police has no idea what's going on here. Uh, only, uh, and the information was given to us from, uh, by, by teachers, by, uh, by others, even during the one round table, uh, criminal investigation was, uh, was started because the, there was a witness of one uh, crime and she said it during the, during the round table and the local police uh, officer said, there. so if there is this case, I need to ask you to stay and uh, we, we, will, we, we, need your, we need your information. We, will, we, we need to investigate this, the case. So these are very important cases, very underestimated and very often, uh, very often we see that uh, there is a big problem with identification. This I would like to and sometimes it's not priority you know the problem is that sometimes you are talking with high-ranking officials like uh, deputy of minister of interior and they do not see this as a priority but it's it's actually it is very high priority it's ch against children you know it's it's it's, it's the, the worst crime you can even imagine 
and this is some statistics uh, based on the international database uh, because for the Europol it's one of the priority. So you can hear, you can see here how big problem it is, how big numbers are, and that actually it is not joke. And uh, this this case is, should be investigated and it should be very, very, very high, high priority. Uh, on the end, this is the latest slide. Uh, I would like to show you integration room. We call it a re green room as in, on the left uh, on the left side. We this is the interrogation room for especially the vulnerable person. In this case, it was children. There were children, but it may be used for other vulnerable persons. It, 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 like like a normal room, so no stress. Just uh, in this room, there is a lot of microphones, cameras, because some some kind of crimes it's, are not, not children are not able to describe some kind of crimes, so rape, for example. They don't know what this rape is, so they are showing it. Uh, or drawing it, uh, or showing it on these papers, uh, how, uh, how, uh, what, what will happen with them, who did it, and um, and uh, uh, it's uh, shown on the camera. There are microphones, and uh, and the room next to this, there is a room with uh, uh, actually in this room, interrogation room, green room, there is a victim or or witness or especially a vulnerable person who is giving the testimony. And there is a, a police investigator only. There is no one else. And the rest of the people who should be involved in this process, judge, prosecutor office, psychologist, some others are in the next room. Uh, and they are listening everything through, through, through monitors and through microphones. So you see very different room. If you are interrogating children, it should look different than from the interrogation of Andrei Romanovich Chikatilo. Uh, several from Soviet Union, and to underline how important uh, this investigation is, I would like to say that the Serleman, a serial Andrei Romanovich Chikatilo, was actually arrested after first murder. Uh, in the Soviet Union, I believe it's quite a famous case, but I'm not sure if the famous is that he was arrested after first murder. He killed Lenochka Zakotlova in Rostov na Donu. Uh, there was a witness who saw Chikatilo and Lenochka Zakotlova walking on the street. So uh, there was a facial composite made, uh, and according to this, he was found and arrested. Uh, but unfortunately, it was the point where uh, where work of professional policemen stopped and it, it didn't continue. Uh, and the police began to be influenced by 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 political uh, po political pressure, and as a Chikatilo was a member of a party, he was released, and he killed more than uh, he, he killed another fifty two people. Majority of them were children and women. So this is the case, which illustrates how important it is to have a good trust to be a professional, because these 52 people, there was a big chance to save them as we had them in our hands and we released them. It's a mistake of this, of, 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 uh, of police or in that time it was Marisha in, in Rostov. So they are guilty in that of another 52 person because uh, they were unprofessional, because there was a political influence and they were not able to finish the job. So this is the last slide. And I will, I will, I'm happy for, for the questions. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I would just make a couple of comments on my own before okay. we to for questions. Uh, concerning the Ukrainian example, when the police would arrest some people who illegally cut wood or were smuggling, but then uh, people were released, so it caused disappointment among the police force. Well, it seems that reforming just one unit is not enough, so it should yes. be a complex approach. 
Yes, yes, yes. It's very, very, it's very important. Uh, this is actually the biggest problem, you know, because if the local police, if the patrol police do not see the result of this work, are they are disappointed by the results of investigations, which is still criminal police is in charge. The disillusion is very strong. And uh, now already we see very negative results of this not was not finished the the the, the reform and um, this in this case you are completely you are you are right yeah this is a big problem that uh, you know you need to if you are in the organization you need to understand that you have the same goal that actually patrol police is a brother it's a part of the general work of police in general so if only patrol police is working which cannot investigate they may detect, they may follow, they may stop, they may break a, write a protocol, but they cannot investigate because it's a work for criminal police. So if criminal police is not working, I'm not saying that they are not working at all. They are working. I have a friends in criminal police. They have good job. They are, some of them are doing great jobs. But in many cases, they're also disappointed, you know, because they are working on some cases after that they are replaced by some new people who have no idea about the case. Uh, so the reason is there was only one reason there are the political influence that some cases should not be investigated because as for this timberwood very often very high ranking local officials are involved uh, as i know from uh, let's say from one region uh, uh, there was a five million of cash found in five in cash found in uh, in in the house uh, of persons which were involved in this in this uh, in this business so it's very 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 profitable yes and another uh, example from ukraine which you might be interesting for our participants is that the national anti-corruption bureau has had troubles investigating some cases and proceeding with such investigations prosecuting the uh, the uh, some people because of the unreformed courts. Yeah, yeah, this is very big problem actually. Yeah, this is, I think I, I wanted to talk about it, but maybe I didn't, I under, and I didn't underline it uh, so strongly as, yeah, this is very big problem. Uh, even the prosecutor office sometimes is working, but the courts of Ukraine, it's just, it's at, it's very bad. You cannot trust them at all. You know, uh, it's you, you, if you are listening Ukrainian news, almost every day there are some cases of corruption, of very high ranking, of very high ranking uh, judges. Uh, so this this is in these conditions, serious cases may be investigated, but there will be no punishments as the criminals involved have enough contacts and finance to secure their safety. And uh, the way how they will not be punished, there's a lot of way how to, 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 to do it. So yeah, this is the problem. Yeah, courts are not, uh, it's a problem of... Uh, <laughs> there was a... This is the big problem, and I think it should be done. But it's difficult because you know judges, even in my country, in courts, in, they have a special protection, uh, and they know how to defend themselves. So, uh, the reform of judges is the most difficult one, uh, and how to do it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm more focused on police reform. So, so as for this. It's one of the most difficult part of the reform. I completely agree, but I would ask you to, to as for the judges, I would, uh, I would, I would, I would ask you to, to, to ask someone else because I'm not an expert on this part of reform. Uh, well, and just one more remark before I open the floor for questions. Uh, that uh, document forgery you mentioned, the Russian case, and it's still, I believe, possible to buy different documents, driver's licenses and diplomas, everything in Russia. Yeah. But a few days ago, there was this case in Bulgaria when yeah. a gang of forgers advertised their services by- Sylvester Stallone, I know. Publishing <laughs> a picture, yeah, so a forged Bulgarian passport in the name of Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
you know, I am not saying this, this is the problem only for Russia. This is a problem also in Bulgaria, Romania, and some mm -hmm. other countries probably also. Uh, the offers, but the, the only offer I saw personally was in Petersburg. That's why I used this case. But on yeah. the internet, uh, I, 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 am, I, am, I have experience with the offers from Romania and now from Bulgaria. Yeah, it's a problem. So demand creates some supply, I suppose. Yeah, you know, especially especially if you are talking about the members of the European Union, the, our passports are very, very good to have a passport of the European Union. You can travel free, freely almost everywhere. So, of course, uh, uh, by the way, uh, we arrested some Ukrainian gang in Prague and they had a Romanian passport. They were from Chernovtsi, which is a region not far from Romanian border. They found some parents, neighbors from Romania, and you get the passport without, without knowing Romanian language even, yeah? And they have a passport. And with the Hungarian passport, there were also problems. So it's always good for the criminals to have several passports. And if the passports are from the EU members, it's very good. And this is a problem all, everywhere, not only from, from Russia. I had just this picture, so I used it. <laughs>